One of the areas that's most critical for information systems to operate, of course, is electrical power. And we can all have that problem where we've had a blackout. A blackout is an extended loss of power, which means that our systems, if we don't have some type of backup power system, quite simply won't operate. We also know that if we're not prepared, a blackout can actually do significant damage to some of our files and so on as well. But we often see fluctuations in power. Electrical power is not steady. Quite often it can be affected by other equipment in the area, for example, additional load brought in because of a certain event. And that can cause where the voltage dips or sags. Now, we could call this some type of a fault, or we could call it a brownout, a reduction in power for a period of time, which again can still cause damage to equipment. We also get the surge of power as maybe a new generator comes online or another piece of equipment turns off. We get lightning strikes and spikes. All of these surges, spikes and sags can very definitely affect the ability of our sensitive electrical equipment to continue to operate. It can blow circuit boards and transistors and do a significant amount of damage. When an organization has a lot of problems with equipment just failing, or maybe they have a lot of problems with noise, or in some cases their data communications is unreliable, that could easily be a result of poor grounding. When we walk into a server room, every rack of equipment should have a good solid ground cable or earth cable connected to it. That will take any of the voltage which is in the frame of that rack and bleed it off to a secure ground. And we often find where there are problems, it's because that grounding is not working. The grounding hasn't been connected properly, and not only should we ground every rack for the equipment, but we should also have ground for the entire building. Many of our steel buildings today can act like a huge antenna, and you can get quite a bit of stray voltage running through the steel infrastructure of the building, and that can cause damage. But that building should then have a good ground connection that would take any of that electrical potential and then bleed it off. We also see where there's, should we say, high voltage cabling especially. Anytime there's a wire cable that has an electrical current going through it, it creates electromagnetic field around that cable. And that electromagnetic field can affect other cables, other equipment in their vicinity. And this is what we call then electromagnetic interference, causing things like crosstalk and other types of induced voltage and so on. This is why in some places where there is a lot of, should we say, motors and so on running, we'll use things like shielded cable. So it then protects the cable inside, is protected from this outside influence because any power that is going to then bleed onto the cable it goes onto the shield and then again is grounded out properly. So how do we address power problems? Well the most common is to put in a UPS, uninterruptible power supply. Now as auditors, yes you'll probably find there's a UPS. The problem is, is that UPS large enough? That UPS was put in five, seven years ago and it had enough capacity to handle what was necessary at the time it was installed, plus the anticipated growth for the next three years. But we've continued to grow since then, and maybe the UPS has not been then updated, so it's powerful enough to actually be able to handle all of the systems in the case of a power failure. We, of course, will often have backup generators, you might have a UPS system that can hold the systems running for a certain period of time. But if we have extended power outage of more than a few minutes, we'll have a generator that comes online, whether it's diesel or kerosene, that kicks on and of course then can start to provide power and support the building maybe for days if necessary. 
But this is again where we have to make sure that our generators are going to be able to carry the load. And when we talk about carrying the load, remember it's not just the IT equipment. We have to also be able to have enough backup power to be able to power the air conditioning system. Because if I can run the server room, well, I've got enough power to run that, but the air conditioning doesn't work. It's going to be a very short time period before we're going to have equipment failure anyway. Make sure backup generators are run maybe once a month. They're properly maintained. They have a supply of fuel and that that fuel is not getting too old as well. A lot of organizations that have a critical requirement then for electrical power may actually have a power feed that comes in from different than parts of the power grid. So that the normal feed going into our building, we have one feed that feeds off one portion of the grid, but it could be that we bring in a separate feed from another area. So even if there's a power failure in one area, hopefully we'd still have power available from that alternate power feed. We put in surge protectors. And this is anything from capacitor banks to, of course, the normal surge protectors we put on many of our pieces of equipment that'll just take any surge or spike in power and bleed it off to ground. And a surge protector has certainly a, an essential value here, especially if we're in an area that has a lot of fluctuations in power or the potential for lightning strikes and so on. Quite often, Associated with a server room, we'll also have an EPO switch. An EPO is an emergency power off switch, which means that if we hit that switch, we can kill all the power to that server room instantly. And this is especially important if we have something like a fire. You have a fire and maybe the fire sprinkler is going to sprinkle and put the fire out. If I can kill the power, then very often we can actually salvage the equipment. For example, a misconception by many people is that water conducts electricity. And water doesn't conduct electricity. It's the ions in the water that conduct electricity. And if I've used distilled water, then it's not going to conduct electricity. And in some cases, we have what we call misting systems today instead of the normal fire sprinklers, where we can actually then spray a fire suppression based on a misting system on live equipment. And the secret to that, of course, is that by spraying a mist, I can cool the fire down and put it out, but without actually causing that residual water to be sitting on circuit boards that could cause short circuits. And especially if I've built it with some type of a distilled water system. The idea of an EPO switch, though, is important that if we have a serious power problem, we can actually kill the power quickly and therefore hopefully save lives and maybe, of course, save equipment.